I love guys who smoke crack. Why is that? They're more funner. In what ways? They pay more, they fuck less. Because they can't? They can't get up. <laughs> I've heard that. So they're going to pay you to stay. The, they just want somebody to smoke with. Yeah. There's all kinds out there, aren't there? Yeah. The majority of your customers are white or black, Mexican? Mexican. Mexican? You work uh, Figueroa, mostly? Figueroa, Western. Western, yeah. Butterfly, when, when did you start doing this? When I was 15. 15. How did your parents let you do this? Um, my mom didn't know. I was running away from placement. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What was going on, what was going on at home that you? Um, my mom was on drugs and we got taken away. So... Where was your dad? Well, my mom gave, gave us to the system. But where, where was your dad? My dad was in jail. Hmm. So when you were in the foster system, you snuck out and... Well, I was running away to my friend's house and I ended up running to pimps oh. on my way like to the train station or just walking into the bus. And so, I, I grew up all over though. So meeting a pimp at 15 is the beginning of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first trick? Um, my first trick, I didn't even have to fuck him. <laughs> Perfect. He gave me $500, but he was an older guy. I used to meet him by the donut shop, and he used to give me $20 every day. And so one day he told me to come meet him by his house. He wanted to show me his house. So I was like, okay. But when I got out of school, I walked a whole another way around. And I never went back. I just told him about, like, I had a fire in my house and my clothes got burned. And I needed new stuff, so he gave me $500. Mm. And I didn't know. Was it true I, or you were hustling him? I was hustling him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know, but I knew this grown man wasn't supposed to talk to me, you know? And I've been around, like, the game. I didn't know fully, but I knew he was out of line, so I knew I could extort him. How much, how much of this is hustling? Uh, it's all hustling, but, but how much of it is just like outright? Not, 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 if you not have just, a good mouthpiece. I'm sorry? If you have a good mouthpiece, you can, you know, really. Get more money out of a guy. Yeah. Sometimes I speak Spanish and sometimes I speak English and then I act like I don't even know what Spanish they're talking about to get my money. I'm like, no, I didn't say that. What are you talking about? What's your favorite kind of trick? Mascus. Mexicans? They come quick and they give you the money. They don't give you no problem. It ain't about like just the sex. It's, it's the money. Like, he don't come, I'm gonna get my money. The faster he comes, the faster I get my money. The faster I go to somebody else. How much money do you typically make in a night? Like nine. 900? Yeah. But you're living in motels? I have a story to tell. <laughs> it's fascinating how these girls can make so much money, but then they're, they're living day by day. That's if, like, I, I can say right now, I'm being a half a hoe, because I'm not really doing it, but I'm doing it. But if I was doing it, <sighs> I have. Tell me your I'm, story. I'm trying to get out the game. Everybody's trying to get out. I, I want to get out. But if I tell this, then that's going to make me have to get out. Oh, I see. Maybe this will maybe this will be the impetus to get out. Like, my mom have nine kids. I'm the oldest. I have seven brothers. I have one sister. 
And my mom, she, you know, she tried hard to raise us, but it was hard when, you know, the drugs came out in the 80s. It was very hard. <laughs> and she tried, so she couldn't. She couldn't get us, you know, feed us properly. She couldn't do the things, you know, to feed nine kids, to house nine kids at that time. And it was making it hard for her. So she gave us to the system. She told them to come get us. I was watching my brothers and sisters every day, cooking and cleaning when I was 10 years old, nine years old. And I missed that, you know? And when I went in, I'm thinking that they was gonna treat me better. They treated me so messed up. My first placement I went to, it was the 94th earthquake. And the lady had glass all over her windows, all over her room. It was like like shiny little things. And the earthquake came and my mama bought me a me sized dog. That was the only thing she had bought me. And I had that of hers. And when the earthquake happened, I'm just standing in my bed and this bed is shaking. I'm not knowing what's going on. I'm just in there by myself, you know, the lady never came in here and looked for me, nothing. The next morning she woke up and she said, who did this? You did this. And she started beating me with a doll. The doll that my mama bought me. Said I broke her, trying to all her stuff in the room. So after that, that made me scared of earthquakes. She, she slept through the earthquake. Yeah, she slept through, she didn't come check on me or nothing. <laughs> yeah. So right. when I went back to court, they were supposed to not take me back to that placement. But when the court was over, they was putting me back on a bus and putting me back in that placement. And I was like, no, I don't want to go back. The lady's beating me. And then it was like, you have to go back. And I refused to get on the bus. And that's the only reason why they didn't take me back. And I went to other placements and things happened sexually. Um, I ended up going back to my mama, but. You were how old about this time? Like 12. Wow. And I got pregnant. At 12, no, 13. I got picked on at 13. And I end up having. Who was the father? Um, This young boy that stayed with my brothers and their grandmother, because my brothers stayed with their grandmother when it was um, in foster care. And I stayed out, I stayed with my grandma. But then I moved into a foster care because my grandma moved to Texas or Mississippi somewhere. And I didn't want to go because I want to stay close to my mother. So I end up going over at my grandmother's house, my brother's in the grandmother's house. I met him and I end up getting pregnant. And you had the child? I have three now. Did you raise your kids? Um, I got all of them taken away due to my mental. What's what's going on mentally that you lost your kids? Um, yeah, there's being a foster kid. I was in the orphanage, like uh, McLaren Hall. You only supposed to stay there for 15 days. I stayed there for a whole year. And they got shut down right after I left. And I was telling them what was happening in there and what was going on. And they didn't really do nothing about it. It, it was a lot of stuff going on. What was McLaren Hall like? I've heard a lot of people tell me about that. Um, you can say it was like fun on Fridays. That was it. You just go on a big field and you, you, can, you can't go swimming, ain't no guard. Um, it's nothing on the big field, you play basketball. But if you do something wrong, they restrain you. And I heard that they're not supposed to put their hands on you like that. 
When I used to get restrained a lot. Restrained means what? Like sumo wrestler, like body slam, like like WC, WF, like oh oh get over here. Oh. You, get you, get oh. you get physical with it. Yeah. No, no sexual abuse there though. Yeah. That sexual too? abuse. Yeah. It was. Wow. And this is where we're putting our kids. Yeah, um, I had it real. I had it real bad, and that made me like. I feel like made me who I am today, and how I look at authority. Like they raised me, you know, all my life. I didn't got a system till I was eighteen. All I know is therapy, doctors, <laughs> over and over counseling, meds. I didn't, I didn't want to take none of that stuff when I was younger, but I took it one time. I never did counseling, never did therapy until I got grown. I never took it serious. I used to cuss my therapist out. I didn't understand life, you know, at that time. And I thought like everything that was teaching me was a punishment, you know, instead of me being home with my mom, everything was a punishment because we got abused. So I just wanted to run away. I used to fight. I used to, I'm like a, I'm a loner. I'm a popular loner. I have to be by myself. I can't be around fake people. I'm paranoid. I've been thinking like people would have to get me. You know, you know, if you lie to me, you do anything like. <laughs> It's made me paranoid. I trusted people. When I trusted them with my life, and now I'm here. <laughs> I'm still here doing this. And, and in some way, I feel like <laughs> this is what they want me to do. <laughs> if you know where I live right now, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to cry like this. <sighs> I feel like the system failed me. And your mom. Took me. My mom was there trying to get us back the whole time, but they wouldn't give her back because she didn't have a, a home to fit nine kids. Oh, but they end up giving my brothers and them back to my mama when she had a two bedroom and my brothers were sleeping on the floor. She had five boys back, teenagers. She didn't know what to do. She had to take them to the doctor, counseling this and this and this and this and this and this and they just rushed her back out of nowhere. But y'all took forever to put me back. And I, you know, I helped my mom out through all the struggles. I did what I had to do, and this this all I know. You've been doing. You've been in this situation for how long? Working the streets. <laughs> Fifteen. But how old are you now? Thirty-five. Oh. I'll be thirty-six next month. <sighs> doing this kind of work gets you down. <sighs> It gets everyone down. Yeah, because I know I'm better. <laughs> I'm worth more. I feel like pussy should have a value. And they do, they put a value on it, you know? They, they, it seems like they all group up and set a price on this. It's degrading sometimes. 
but that's all I know. That's what I grew up on. It's like being out here is family. That's all you know how to get money. That's what you feel safe doing. That's what you know how to do. Do you have any friends? Real friends? Real friends? I have one best friend, but I've been on for 16 years. I don't mess with females. I don't trust them. It's got to be a hard life. It is. Because everyone's a hustler. Every, everyone's a hustler. Are you a hustler at heart or you just have to be because you're out here? I'm a hustler at heart because on the weekend, I be in a drug house. On the weekdays, I'm sad. I'm with the white folks. And I learned the inside and I learned the outside just by being brought around that stuff. I, I got a show, I didn't know what crack was until they started showing me on TV. But I had a bad social worker. She used to cuss me out, told me I ain't gonna be shit. My mama a crackhead. I'm never going back home with her. And so the social worker would tell you this at what age? At, I was 14, I was, that's when I got, I had got pregnant again. But they never told me that they had places for kids that's pregnant. They ended up telling me afterwards, and I ended up going to a place where they had all pregnant girls there and people with children. I'm like the only girl up there that's not pregnant and just had an abortion. And now y'all got me around all these kids. I'm babysitting kids though. I'm a, I'm a good mother. I was babysitting everybody kids for a dollar per hour. Hmm. And I, I used to make fake baby concert, uh, fake baby contracts. Tell them I say, hey, I watch your baby for this many hours. And I used to get $60 a week. So I said, like, I'm a hustler at heart, but learning the inside of the game and the outside of it, the, the manipulation and the reverse psychology, I learned it from the white folks when I was in placement. They used it on me. I had doctors, I'm not saying like white folks, that's what mostly my doctors and psychology, you know, therapists and counselor was. And I had black people, but they was real mean. They was meaner. Do you still talk to your family? Yeah. yeah. No, I talked to my mom mostly. I talked to her yesterday. Did you ever, when you were younger, have dreams of doing something with your life? You said what? Did you have dreams of doing something with your life when you were a kid? I wanted to be a rapper. Hmm. I'm not the best rapper, but I got something to say. I'm like Dre. But I want to do clothing. I like the crochet, blankets, purses. I like to do arts and crafts. And I learned that in placement. I learned to crochet from this Mexican lady. She didn't speak no English. And she used to go, every time I mess up, she go, no. <laughs> and point and then do it. And I learned just like that, I can make you a whole blanket. Is it, is it scary for you to think about getting out? Because this is all you've ever done? It's time. I can't, I can't keep doing this. I'm hurting. You know, a, a lot of people. <laughs> Most of all, you know, I'm hurting myself. Cause I know things I wanna do, but 
dealing with my mental, it's like I fight with a lot of stuff, you know? What, what emotions do you deal with mostly? You depressed? Like, I used to hear voices. And they used to talk about my mom and talk about my daughter. And I'm thinking like, man, I ain't never thought this would be me. You know, am I tripping? <laughs> so I've been, you know, taking medicine. Are you taking I've been them? taking, taking medicine them? for like three years. You taking them now? You know, I think about my past and my future, like, I like to be alone. A bear came, I'm like a bear in hibernation. I gather up all my food and I hide in the house. But it's like anybody I run into know what I do, either already doing it or want me to do it for them. I never can run into a Prince Charming guy. You're saying you n you've never run into one? Yeah, like a pretty woman. Yeah. A lot of the girls dream about some guy coming and saving them. That was a good movie. That, that really, like, explains it. You have a pimp currently? Yeah. How does he treat you? Uh, on and off, okay. But knowing that I want to stop is like putting a fight towards what, how we, you know, we talk to each other and stuff. Just the money I made. I say, I'm a vet. I gotta get up out of this, you know. I got, there ain't no 401 okay, there ain't no retirement check in this, you know. I can't keep living like this off my body. I'm gonna like, warm myself out. I'm getting all these bruises all over me, and it's getting more dangerous out there. The girls are getting killed. Yeah. And I don't wanna, you know, end up on the news, you know, somewhere. Well, we don't really end up on the news that much. I heard, you know, a lot of stuff. If you were to somehow get away. Yeah, I have been through some stuff. Would there be any money in your pocket or no? Um, I had, I really didn't have no money when the guy was trying to rob me. I was trying to go get some weed for my weed, man. And I got in the car with him. He was like, he wanted a date. And I'm like, he was like, I'm not black. And I'm like, why would you say that? And most guys say that they, you know, they're trying to do something, but, you know, like trying to say I'm not black. And so to tell like they're a cool guy. And I get in his car, I get in his back seat, and he was like, give me a fucking money, bitch. He turned me to the side and I couldn't get up. But then he dug in my pocket and he's like, I'm gonna rob you. Give me your fucking money. And then he dug, he dug in my pocket to get my money out. I'm like, okay, you had that. I can't move, I'm stuck. And then when he tried to, he said, now I'm gonna take your pussy. I said, oh no, you got me fucked up. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't take my pussy. I, I, I can't let that happen. That's, that's rape. So I'd rather fight for my life. So when I started fighting, that's when he like started jumping in the front seat. And like when I was trying to get out, I just socked him in the back of his head and he drove off. You were able to get out? Yeah. He took my little $30 that I had for my weed. <laughs> That's it. But it could have been worse because I couldn't move. Have things like this happened to you before? Yeah, when I first started, this guy choked me. But I'm a big girl, so I choked him back. He saw how strong I was. He said, get out. And then he started choking me again, and I started choking him. So I got away, though. But this one guy had a gun. 
And I knew I had to like give it up. It was like, what else can you do? That's when you have to give it up. But it's still rape. Anything I do for free is rape. They don't feel that though. I had something recent happen to me. The guy acted like he wanted me to try to pull over to the side and I told him, I, I said, you messing with the wrong prostitute. And I kicked him and his stomach had his feet, uh, his whole body up to the window. And I pepper sprayed him. And then I left my phone inside his car. And then when I bend down to get it, he stalked me in my face. But I was like, okay, I ain't about to fight with this man. And he about to go away. He already pepper sprayed. So. Have you ever seen any, anyone in your life, any examples of a loving relationship? Like your, your mom or uncles or aunts or anything like that? Um, the most I saw was my grandmother and her husband, but they stayed in separate rooms. He was Hispanic, his name was Robert. And he was a good guy though, but he used to bring the money home. Give me a hundred dollars every week. I put it up. My grandma used to cook for him. I bring his food. I'll be in his den where he sleep at. And I used to watch TV all day until he get home. I used to steal his quarters. He used to be right there. He used to count it, but it'd be so many. I used to steal them and go to the donut truck. What's your favorite memory in your life? Is that what? What's your favorite memory of your life? My favorite memory. Um, just being at home with my brothers and sisters and cooking and cleaning and like just being a mom towards them. I wish I had that like the whole time growing up, like being with my family. Going to the foster system is probably the worst thing that ever happened to you guys, right? Yeah, that's the worst thing that ever happened. Like, that, I can't wish that up on nobody. And when I got older, I, when I got my kids taken away, I thought that I was ready to fight against them, but I wasn't. And they gave me the same courtroom that I had that I was a child as an adult. So the judge knew me as a child and as an adult. So I felt they used you know, my history of my when I was a child. I used to fight a lot. Girls, guys, whatever. Cause they used to pick on me. But I'd be the one that hit first and I get in trouble cause I beat them up. And that was all in my, in my history. And then I used to put staff on IA. I've been to Central, Selmore, Camp Scott, Kirby, Anazuka, almost went to YA. What, what kind of things were you doing that got you? Um, my social worker, the one that I had, that I said that used to cuss me out, um, she said that I threw the phone at her. So she felt threatened for her life. So I went um, to jail the first time for that. And then the second time I went this uh, lady said that I threatened the whole group home and said that I was going to beat up everybody in the group home, which I didn't say that. Do, do you, would you say that you carry, a lot, carry around a lot of anger? Yeah. Who do you think you're angry at? My judge. Just everybody in the courtroom. They all know me. It's like fighting towards them to try to get my kids back. You know, it was hard. 
No, did y'all raise me? Y'all saw me all the time in them courts. I used to go to the court every 15 days. They used to tell me, no, you ain't not going home. They told me that you only supposed to be there 15 days and they supposed to find you a place. I stayed there for a whole year. And a lot of stuff went on. And I don't want to talk about, you know, I got a court case, stuff going on. I don't know if that's in it. I don't want to talk about it, but it's, it's other stuff. It's deeper. Y'all hear about it. If y'all see me on here. But... I'm just, it made me in fear of authority. It's hard to trust anybody when everyone's... Yeah, I can't even go inside a building to take care of my, 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 my personal business. I get anxiety. These are my talking. I think they're making fun of me. I think that they trying to mess up my paperwork on purpose. Like, I feel like they just after me to fuck up my life. They want me to be fucked up. Like, I feel like all the foster kids are supposed to be fucked up. It's always something wrong with us. What is it? You know? My brothers and them, they grew up with their grandma, but then they ended up getting foster care afterwards. And they saw, you know, what we went through. And the social worker we had, she used to cuss my mom out. She used to cuss my sister out. She used to cuss my, my, my mother and her grandmother, grandmother out. And I'm like, this lady supposed to represent me in court. And we, we used to talk about each other. I used to call her all kind of bitches. She called me all kind of bitches. We could talk about each other, ugly bitches, whatever. And then when somebody important come in, we all like this. Yes. How are you today, LaCora? Oh, that's my name. Oh, my God. She's all fake and stuff, and I used to tell them all that stuff about what she used to do. They didn't care. And then when I got my kids sick, in, my baby dad, he was supposed to be on my side. He made it harder for me, and he made me, like, knowing that he knew my temper and how I felt towards the courts. I, you can't make somebody do something, but he knew that he could make my blood bubble. And I used to go off on him at court, and it made me look bad. And then me crying and crying, like I'm a cry baby now. I cry a lot for everything, but I don't, it, I don't cry. It's hard for me to cry. And crying right now is like, oh. Yeah, I say the real me. Mm -hmm. But having the people that I thought I was gonna have my back and fight against them and I wasn't ready, it took a lot out of me. And then just having the same courtroom as a child, seeing the same judge that I knew, my, she, my fouls is like this big, she can't even see me. And I felt like they didn't give me a chance with my other kids. And I felt they set me up to get my other kids sick in. Do you feel like it's, it's almost it's like- never got me, had my back. Always, I always been homeless. So it's almost like your whole life, the cards have been stacked against you. Yeah, I've been homeless since I left the system. I just now got my own place. And It's been hard just keeping that and maintaining that and, cause I be out here. And I'm scared I'm, I'm gonna lose it. I don't wanna lose what I have cause you know, I got family, I got kids that wanna come 
you know, and visit. I don't even see my son, though. He's adopted fully. He got adopted first when he was three. And that's messed up because when you in the system, when your mother has you in the system, and then your kids go in the system, if you was in the system, you can't get your grandkids. So I didn't have a chance for my mother to step in and grab my ch my kids for me. And then when the dad was coming in to, to grab my son, he got killed. Mm. And so they was like, your time is up. He's getting adopted. I did my classes. I did everything they wanted me to do. Um, I graduated from them. I graduated from high school. But I graduated when I was in Dorothy Kirby, the mental institution. But that's the one thing I wanted to do was finish school. And I told them they used to like want to restrain me because I was acting up because I was about to get into a fight. And they said, you can't go to school. And I'm like, you can't de deprive me of my education, <laughs> my education. They used to tell them that, like, let me go to school. But I'm glad, I'm glad I did that. I used to work. I had a job. You've had a job? <laughs> yeah. And you tell me you have mental issues, but you seem pretty together. You're just going through a lot of tough breaks. No, I have my ups and downs. I have my snaps. I have, I'm, like, I'm highly medicated. Oh, you are? Yeah, I take a bilifier, a shot, every month. And I take some other pills. Mm -hmm. So it keeps me, like, mellow, sleepy, qu slow to react on things. Controls your, controls your anger? It really does. Like I said, when I was younger, I refused to take them. I only took them like one time. But as an adult, I thought it wasn't going to work. But ever since I've been taking a bill of fire, it's really been keeping me like calm, but I still react on a lot of things. When I'm angry, I like, I go to the stream because I think like it's the end of the world. Butterfly, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? You... It's a blessing, it's a lesson. You're going to learn something and you're going to be blessed with something. And you got to take everything as a blessing and a lesson. And... Just live your life. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't hesitate. Have patience. But in my mind, I got to do everything. And I then I, everything clutter. You have, you have nobody to rely on, right? Um. I have a caretaker that helps a little bit, but um, just like most of the days, like I just like I don't look pretty like this. Just not I can just look like an ancient mama. You wouldn't even know who I am. You're beautiful today. Today, because I tried to do this hair. I tried. I tried it. I tried off the YouTube. I'm very like artistic. I can do anything. I can do my own hair. I, I did my own lace front. And it's a new style everybody got. So, but I, I, um, I struggle through a lot of suicidal attempts. You do. And I still, even though I'm on my medication, I still hear my voices sometimes, but I try to block them out and be normal like everybody else. But I feel that everybody's crazy. In different ways. 
Yeah, because when I was in the system, they said you got to express each each emotion. If you're happy, you're sad, you're angry, but the way I express mine is where how I grew up, always breaking stuff, fighting, getting restrained, and then as an adult, I'm still doing the same thing mm-hmm. when I get mad, like a kid. You ever done therapy? Um, I'm about to get one. Oh, good. Okay. I had one, but I kept getting therapy, 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 therapy over, like different therapy, therapists, I mean. Yeah, you're just talking about your childhood. Probably yeah, be- over and over, and I don't want to keep starting over and over, like, let's get this out. Let's figure some stuff out here, like, I've been through this over and over. Every time you want to hear the same story, make me cry. Tell me about your life. No, I already told the last lady about my life. I'm tired of starting over. So it's like they don't get that in therapy. And they want to know, like, what keep people in therapy is like trying to get out their whole life in one sitting. Yeah, it does. You can't get it out, but you want to let them know, like, what you're going through so they can try to fix what you're going through now. Like, I'm gonna let you know my past, present, and my future, but I want you to fix my present. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Butterfly. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay. And I wish you the best of luck out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah.